A person who thinks all the time has nothing to think about except thought. So he loses touch with reality and lives in a world of illusion. By thoughts, I mean specifically chatter in the skull, perpetual and compulsive repetition of words. I'm not saying that thinking is bad. Like everything else, it's useful in moderation. Through excessive thinking, we have lost touch with reality. We are so tied up in our minds that we've lost our senses. Hello 191 community, thank you for joining me today for the 2021 State of the District Address. I wanted to start this presentation with that performance from the amazing Burnsville High School Winter Drumline. Their music is always so inspiring and this year's production I thought was especially so. Titled Peace of Mind, it reminds me that after a year like no other, we have to recommit to our work in the world. Not that we've been hibernating or hunkered down, but that this moment as we come to the end of the school year and what we hope will be the end of the pandemic. Now is a time to breathe, reflect on all we've accomplished and prepare to make our path forward. I want to start with reflection. Last year in this address, I said that COVID was an obstacle and we would find a new path. Looking back, that's exactly what we've done. We have been trailblazers in responding to an unprecedented challenge from the first week that schools were closed to students in March of last year, when we organized and distributed Chromebooks to students so they could learn from home. At that time, we didn't know how long students would be away from school. It was a risk to hand out 7,000 devices, but we took it because we were committed to giving students the best experience possible. We also invested immediately in professional development for staff so we could deliver instruction. We weren't, weren't going to wait. It wasn't a matter of if we were going to make a distance learning work. We only asked how we were going to make it succeed. And over the past year, that has been a mantra, not if, but how. As last school year ended, we asked parents, staff, and students what they needed. From their feedback, we implemented live online instruction, synchronous instruction, as part of our summer school program. Many districts didn't even try to offer summer school because of the complexity, but we did offer it. We tried an entirely new format, finding a way to give families and students what they needed. That commitment, not if, but how, was met in areas outside of instruction too. Our Food and Nutrition Services Department, with support from transportation, made meals available to students in the community and even delivered to their homes when needed. Our Community Education Department figured out how to continue to offer childcare in a safe environment, even expanding their programs to include middle school students. And when it came to the start of the school year, we blazed our own path again. We started by prioritizing health and safety and recognizing the need for staff and students to get time to learn and practice new behaviors and protocols. We had a staggered start. We welcome more students back into buildings each week while still providing distance learning to those who chose to learn from home. That staggered start ended up being a model that Governor Walls would use later in the year. Throughout the year, we kept our vigilance when it came to student and staff safety. We received some criticism for being too cautious. I understood all along that not everyone would agree with the decisions we made. 
but I know that criticism during this time came from a place of concern for our students, from a place of wanting to do right by them. Hearing from those voices helped me understand our community better and helped ensure we didn't settle for what was easy, and I am grateful for that. In the end, I'm incredibly proud of how we've led through this school year. Our staff members, teachers, custodians, food service workers, educational assistants, principals, and everyone else gave every measure in themselves to support our students, our families, and each other. They didn't ask if, they just focused on how. I want to take a moment to thank one group in particular. Our school nurses led by the incomparable Bernie Bean have been irreplaceable during this health crisis. When we had a case of COVID in our schools, they conducted contact tracing with a strict eye on following protocols to keep students and staff safe. But we didn't just put entire classes or grade levels in quarantine. We followed the protocols so as many students as possible could stay in school, and it worked. We never had to close an entire school because of an outbreak, even after bringing elementary students back to full in person this winter. And when students were required to quarantine, we made sure they had the resources they needed to keep learning with live instruction, even from home. So what have the results been from all of this effort? I don't want to pretend that everything has been just fine. We are all surviving a pandemic together. We can't expect everything to be just fine. But one thing I can assure you is that this has not been a lost year. I've heard more than once that students are falling behind, but falling behind what? Everyone is going through this together. Yes, instruction has been interrupted and students are feeling social and emotional effects and we'll need to continue to address both of these concerns going forward. But students have been learning skills that they're used for the rest of their lives and growing the confidence to be independent. They have problem solved for themselves as they learn new technology and new ways to connect with others. They became teachers themselves, sharing what they learned with peers and even helping teachers navigate a new world of Zoom meetings and screen sharing. Don't take my word for it, hear it from them. Hi, Miss Kristen. Today I'll tell you why has it been a lost year. What I'm proud of learning this year is technology, coding, and many other things. I like Bitbox because I like typing in the commands in the app. It uses JavaScript. And after you type in the commands, the colors change. My sister liked the app where the picture exploded. I had a pie and my sister wanted a cupcake. So I changed it to a cupcake for her and I made it explode. Something I'm proud of this year is the math and things that I've learned of math. My favorite thing was joining to mock the class. I also like the rare tomatoes and inches. Before I was in second grade, I didn't know about class people, now I do. I can even add class I loved learning about biography, like Vincent van Gogh, and I love learning about his painting, of course, and Galileo. He had my interest because he explored space, and I love space. I have learned a lot of technology this year. I can Google a lot of things. I like to teach computer stuff to kids in my class so they can so they can get small like me. I learned how to fix it put a lot of problems. I also know there are some ads. Never click on the ads, even on YouTube. It's important to get out of the ads right away. Now sometimes I 
teach my mom how to use technology. I want you to know that this year has not been a lost year. It has been a perfect year for kids. Thank you to Ms. Lisa Christian and her second grade class for sharing that with us. That's just one class, but it's not unique. Students are learning and growing thanks to the support of their families and thanks to the professionalism, flexibility, and dedication of staff. That's what we get when we don't ask if, but just focus on how we can make it happen. So now I want to look forward at the path we're making as we move out of the current health crisis. Last year, before the pandemic changed everything, we announced a bold plan to expand the successful Pathways model at Burnsville High School to include everything from pre-kindergarten to 12th grade in District 191. Despite all the disruption, we were able to put some pieces of that plan in place this year. At the middle schools, we are focused on providing the fuel for students to learn about themselves and explore the options before them. A new daily schedule means fewer transitions and longer blocks of time for math, reading, and language arts so students can get more personalized learning every day. Advisory periods have evolved to focus more on social-emotional learning and career and college readiness. The changes, along with our already outstanding AVID College Readiness Program, are creating a structure where students can grow, discover, and prepare for success in high school and beyond. And at the elementary level, the work this year has been more behind the scenes, planning curriculum and opportunities so student learning at every elementary school aligns with the Pathways model at Burnsville High School, with students learning about what's possible for their futures. Our goal is to ensure that students at every school have access to those learning opportunities, including things like instrumental music, entrepreneurship, computer science, and advanced learning sparking their excitement, curiosity, and wonder so they realize all the paths that are available to them. And at the high school level, we continue to expand and strengthen the opportunities available for students, building on the nationally recognized Pathways model, which includes a wealth of college credit-bearing courses alongside career-oriented programs like culinary arts, nursing, and EMT certifications as well as industry-supported auto construction and engineering programs, and many more. Now, we're exploring the additional criminal justice, cybersecurity, and advanced manufacturing pathways. These are exciting times, and we aren't the only ones excited about it. Outside organizations see what we're doing, our focus on access, rigor, and equity, and they want to be a part of making it happen. Earlier this month, we received the Comprehensive Arts Planning Program Award from Purpose Center for Arts Education, which will help us as we build a truly K-12 arts program. We also received a $95,000 grant to enhance the automotive pathway at Burnsville High School, and a grant that could total nearly $300,000 to expand computer science exploration at the elementary level. Becoming a pre-K-12 Pathways District has been our plan for more than a year, so these announcements are not so much changes but progress down that path. Perhaps the biggest change for District 191 going into next year is the launch of our permanent online school. Born from our success and the lessons we've learned over the last year, 191 Virtual Academy fits perfectly into our district-wide Pathways model by providing another personalized learning experience. Many of our students have thrived with distance learning because of the flexibility and independence it allows. And next year, they'll be able to continue in a school that is not just delivering instruction online, but is built for online instruction. I'm so excited about the path that lays in front of us, the way we responded to the challenges of this year with community and compassion and purpose. I feel better than ever about our future. And if we continue our commitment to battling the pandemic as a community, especially as the vaccine becomes available for more and more students, I am confident that future will include a return to full-time in-person learning at all levels. So much has happened that it's hard for me to believe that this has been just my second year superintendent in District 191 but I've learned that the character of our community is special. 
We are future focused. We are strong. We are diverse. We are 191. I want to leave you with a poem put together by one of our ninth grade advisory classes. It captures what I think it means to be truly community strong, recognizing and celebrating each student, each staff member, and each community member for who they are as individuals. Thank you. We are from trips in Arizona tea, green grass and lawn mowing. <laughs> Pictures of families and road trips. We are from orange juice and recess. Chicago and a lot of trees, stubborn hard workers. Minneapolis and Somalia, good morals. The Khmer language our parents smoke, spoke with little English. We are from a trailer park, people of color and fun. Dancing and hard co-workers. Ups and downs, Ramadan and Aid, Sabusa chips and Oreos. We are from Maze, advanced technology and smartphone. Cold most of the time in frozen winters, Canada and Toronto. We are from Minnesota and Cambodia. Tomatoes in the garden and sunflower seeds, Thai food and aggressiveness. Photos sacred to us because of the history they Old. We're from trees and quiet roads. The reminder of my family and how much I love them. Mixed colors in church on Easter. We are from laughable kids playing with each other. The memories of our family looked like back then. My love and rice. I will always love you and you are in my heart. We are from June team. The Berkey Rice. Praying five times per day. Lefsa, butter, sugar, and cinnamon. We are from old, raggedy, infested. Go to your room and I love you. Good soul food and nonstop laughter.